Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Catch Mike here, back here again to win little BMW. I mean, you guys seem to love the BMW content, so I'm just gonna keep making those videos. But what we have here is a BMW individual color M3. And just have a look at this gorgeous color. This is definitely a car that would fit the sunshine down in South Florida. But thankfully, we do have some sun today, so you can check out this color properly. This is a 2023 M3 competition. And what we're gonna do in this video is, of course, you know the drill. We're gonna have a look at this front end, the side, the rear, the interior, and then we're gonna take this for a drive. The thing about the M3, though, is there is something weird going on in the front end that I think suits this car much better than it does the M4. Let's have a look at some of the basic spec and tech of the 2023 BMW M3. It has a 3 liter twin turbo inline 6, putting out 503 horsepower, 479 pound feet of torque. You can have it as an all wheel drive or rear wheel drive, connected to an 8 speed automatic transmission. 0 to 6 is done in 3 seconds. And the top speed is 172 miles per hour. Fuel economy sits at 16 city, 23 highway, and the price for this is $80,000. Starting with the front end design, I'm just struck by this Daytona Beach blue color still. It's such a beautiful finish on this thing. But yes, we do have huge kidney grills, uh, buck teeth. Uh, I've heard a lot of different names for the front end grills. But the thing is, I personally think that the front end of this with these grills suit the M3 so much better than the M4. And that has to do with the side views. We're going to talk about that in just a second. Overall here, I've talked about this front end so many times before. Yes, there are a couple of changes I would like to do with the integration of the grill. I don't think the size of the grill is the problem here. I do think the integration that we have is more of the issue when it comes to design. So we're going to do a couple of tweaks to the front end of this car. So here's the thing with these uh, grills that BMW is playing around with. They have so many different grills. You have a different one for the XM, another one for IX, different one for the M2, and then M3, M4 looks different than the X5 and X three so they have a lot of grill designers at bmw at the moment this same thing goes for this m3 front end like we did on the m4 the main issue i have is this piece right here this little bar that you see here i want this to be better integrated in the bumper here and i also we have two parallel lines here and what this does these two lines creates a static feeling in the front that is not in line with at least in my opinion what bmw's front end should look like so making those small changes just like we did to the m4 i think it's going to help the front end and specifically the integration of the grill in uh, the m3 a couple of details here in the front end that i actually really like first of all i do think that this hood treatment with these indents here following the same width at the way i have on the top of the grill i think it looks really good it has this industrial feel to it so it's not as smooth and organic like previous m3s and specifically the previous uh, m2 for example this is the new design language that we have from BMW. In this case, we don't have the carbon fiber exterior package, something that I would probably opt for specifically since we have this beautiful individual color. The way you can see that is if you have a mesh down here in this area, this means that you don't have the carbon fiber package. If you were to add the carbon fiber package, you're gonna have a wing here instead, a carbon fiber wing and a full open intake in that area. Now, for those wondering, I'm just gonna mention it again because this is such a specific and beautiful color. This is Daytona Beach Blue. If you're thinking of ordering an M2 and you want this color, that's what you wanna go with. Talking about the wheels here, we do have a staggered setup in the side view. We're gonna talk about the line flow and what makes this different from the M4 and why I think the front end suits the M3 better in just a second. But first of all, let's have a look at these wheels. They are mostly black here, but I'm glad that they didn't go full black with the faces of the spokes because you can see the faces of the spokes here have this gunmetal finish to it, which I think looks fantastic, brings out the design of the wheel itself. So it doesn't just fade into a black hole, specifically when you're on the highway rolling the wheel, I want to be able to see some spoke designs and some different color where the spoke and the wheel sits inside of the big wheel well. Size of the wheels are 20, the staggered setup here, so we have 20s in the rear and 19s in the front. In this case, I think it kind of looks good. I would probably want to have 20s in the front as well because it's, it, just knowing that they are different sizes for some reason annoys me and I want to have them be the same size front and rear. Now, looking at the shoulder line here, have a look at this. And this is what separates the M3 from the M4. We have a super crisp 
and sharp shoulder going all the way back here. Then he comes back here in a double action shoulder line into the very corner of the taillights. What this does in comparison to the M4, which has a line going here, then it fades in this area, comes back in a lower section and then comes back up at the same height like we have in the rear. It, it has a broken collarbone. It's what I like to call the M4. Here though, everything is structured from the very end point to the front end fender connecting to the front end headlights. And this structure here makes the front end feel like it's part of the rest of the car because we have some complex lines here and long sharp lines. The smoothness of the M4 side doesn't connect well with the front end graphics or the rear end graphics like it does in the M3. One detail I love about the side view of the M3, usually like I did on the M M4 for example, I'm not sure why they are feel so different, but I think this black piece at the lower part actually suits the M3 better than the M4. In the M4 I made that body color to have it sit closer to the ground visually, but I don't know what it is about the M3 that just makes it feel like the black part. Maybe it's the color suits the, uh, the overall design of the side view. And then we have this line here, which I think fits nicely as well and breaks up the clean surfacing that we have, even though I don't think this is functional because I can't stick my fingers in it. Now, one detail that we need to mention when we talk about the side view of the new M3, or new, the 2023 one, the model year, is this area here. Just look at how the door crams in to the wider rear fender. I wish BMW would have made a specific door for the M3 where this fold that we have here, very sharp fold, did not exist. And instead the door kind of smoothly, uh, gradually went into the wider piece of the, of the fender. Unfortunately, I think they saved some money by having this uh, less wide door and that created this fold that we have here that once you see, it's very hard to unsee. Now coming around to the rear end, one thing instantly that I see here is that we have the carbon fiber roof I would like to have this little trunk spoiler in carbon fiber as well, but it is black, so it creates some contrast to the rear end of the M3, which I like because as I just reviewed on the M2, which had a body color top part, I wanted to have something that connects with the black lower piece, like we have had this diffuser in the black tips, have something of this color connect up top here, and I think this spoiler just does that job beautifully. Then we have the blacked out M3 competition logo, camera mounted right there in the center, and I have to say, I also prefer the rear end of the M3 over the M4. The M4 has a beautiful rear end, it, don't get me wrong, but I think these a little bit more static feel that we have in the taillights of the M3 just suits the overall car, the overall design, the side view and the front view better than it does on the M4. Coming up close and personal to the taillights of the BMW M3, just look at this hockey stick design here. I love how it goes from thin in the cl closer to the center and then grows and gets very much wider on the side here. Then you have the reverse light integrated right here, which I think looks pretty good in my opinion. Just have it be in line with the rest of these lines here, but over in this section, you have the X-Drive meaning competition package for all-wheel drive for this BMW and the line flow in the top part uh, spoiler or the trunk is also very beautiful with this angle that we have on this section and also the chamfer going up here becoming wider as it meets the taillight in this section. We can't not talk about the diffusers and the bazooka tailpipes when we look at a, a new BMW M3. Love the setup that we have here. I do even love this sharp corner that we have in this area of both sides, obviously. Maybe I would want to have it be a little bit more organic, but would it then suit the rest of the car design? I don't think so. When you design a car, you need to have all areas and all little graphics have some sort of connection to what's going on in the rest of the car. And even though this looks more industrial than previous M3s, the congruency in the design is still there. Welcome to the interior of the 2023 BMW M3 and it is toasty in here. So I'm gonna fire it up. Uh, might uh, be a little uh, noisy in the background, but I also don't wanna die from dehydration. So I'm gonna turn it off. But what we have in here, as you can see, yes, we do have the iDrive 8 system in this new M3, meaning that we have a 12.3 inch uh, gauge cluster and we also have a 14.9 inch infotainment screen and now it's blowing very hard here so I have to go in in the uh, 
uh, settings here and turn it down. There we go, a little bit <laughs> quieter and uh, cozier in here. You know, I've talked so much about this integration of this uh, iDrive 8 that I'm not gonna cover it a lot. I'm gonna try to be positive about it. I, I st As I said in previous videos, I, I'm starting to get used to the layout here. The key thing for me is that it, it at least it doesn't uh, cover, the steering wheel doesn't cover the corners of the gauge cluster. That's one problem I had in other cars when they have this setup, you can you can barely see what's going on in the corners of the uh, gauge cluster, even though I adjust the wheel. But here, everything is clear, and all the figures and all the graphics are within my field of uh, view when I look at it through the steering wheel. Looking at this integration as well, we have still the um, the bracket here that I wish some designers, engineers would change up for the 2025 model year. Maybe hopefully they do that. We do have some carbon fiber, beautiful inside here, looking gorgeous on the top of the uh, dash and also down here in the center console. We do have some vents here that are very easily adjustable and we, the fan speed and everything is controlled within the software, as I'm sure you know by now. There we go, I just had to adjust these to get some air blowing out of these. Since everything is uh, integrated in the software, it's a really clean surface. I think that's maybe the, the good part about not having buttons. It creates a much cleaner design even though it is pretty stylized here, which I appreciate. Down here, you have the radio control settings, the volume, and <laughs> some uh, buttons for the hazard lights. Down here, though, this is where it gets interesting with this gorgeous cover, uh, carbon fiber cover. If you open this up, you do have the wireless charging up here with a good framing around it, so your phone won't slide around too much when you go in around the corners. And you have a 12 volt cigarette outlet with two cup holders and a normal USB port. Let's close that back up and move down to this area of the center console. This is the control panel right here. You do have the gear shifter with the M logo in the leather itself. I like details like this. Makes me appreciate the M cars a little bit more when they add special details into it. You have the traction control, the, uh, the camera button, the parking sensors, the uh, on and off for the um, engine at stoplights, which I always, as you know, probably heard me say before, I turn that off every single time. You have the start and stop for the engine, you have the M mode setup and the exhaust, which I always turn on. So when we go for a drive, I'm gonna put this in the most aggressive setting as I normally do, because this is an M3. We all know that the M3 can be a comfortable cruiser if you want to. What I wanna know is how sporty can we get this M3 M3 to feel? And that's where I'm gonna have it in uh, the sporty setting. Then you have this dial uh, to control the, uh, the stuff in the infotainment screen. You can use this or you can use the touch pads on the screen itself. You have the media home map telephone navigation back and option buttons in addition to this wheel itself. Moving further back, I kind of like this interior with the gray and the blue, but what I would like to see the interior color be is some sort of sand color, because I think sand with the ocean color outside the blue would look absolutely stunning. So I would spec this with this blue and some uh, medium light brown interior. I think that will, that will look gorgeous. Here we have the center, the armrest, you have the USB-C and a pretty shallow storage space here. Nothing that concerns me too much because you still have a lot of space for a couple of markers in there. And the armrest itself, nothing crazy going on here. We have some nice contrast stitching, same like we have on the seats. So moving on to the seats here, these are not the, the super hardcore bucket carbon fiber seats. And as I said in previous M videos as well, I think I prefer these seats over the carbon fiber bucket seats with the carbon fiber going right here in between your legs. These are just easier to live with and the carbon bucket seats are probably useful when you're going on track and so on. But for everyday use, these are plenty sporty for me. You do have the M3 logo in the headrest. I love how they integrate this in all their M models and the contrast uh, colors the darker gray in the middle and the almost gray or cement color on the outside with the perforation in the middle. Looking up top, since this has a carbon fiber roof, we don't have a sunroof. And if I were to ask you, what would you prefer to have? A sunroof up top, up top or a carbon fiber roof? I guess the answer is pretty obvious. Moving on to the steering wheel. I love the uh, carbon fiber that we have inserts here in this wheel. And what I love about BMW proper M cars compared to M sport cars is the, the special treatment that they give to the steering wheels. 
Specifically, the paddles here look absolutely stunning in carbon fiber with the red plus and minus sign lasered out from the spoke itself. You have these red M1 and M2 buttons. In normal M Sport, they're just black buttons that you have on the spoke here. But here you can see that th these are easily accessible and they're right here and they're also in red, making it feel special. And of course, you have the same carbon fiber on the other side of the spoke and down here. Heated steering wheel button right here in the middle with the uh, stitching around the M logo and you have the M logo right here at the bottom as well with the M stitching on the inside going all around the steering wheel on the interior part. On the left side of the steering wheel we do have the same vented design like we have for the passenger and you have all of the controls for the light settings and in this case we also have the Harman and Kardon sound system that takes up a huge amount of the doors which, by the way, still has this LED strip in it, which I think looks great. It looks like it's been lasered out of this piece of aluminum that goes straight through the door. Same kind of feeling that we have in the door handle itself. And I do like the contrast that we have with the white cement leather in contrast to the black up top. And that's it for the front end. Let's jump in the back and see if I can fit behind my own 6-1 driving position. All right, jumping in to the back seat of the M3. And this being a sedan, I should have a plenty of space here. It is not the smallest sedan either. I have some leg room, but it's not going to be comfortable sitting behind myself driving here. I wish the driver was more like 5'8 instead of 6'1. Then I would be perfect back here. But there are some uh, carbations out of the seat in front of me, which gives me a little bit more leg space. You also have the climate control settings for the rear seat down here with some vents and two USB-C ports. guys setting off in the 2023 BMW M3 everything is in sport plus as much as possible we have the comf uh, the steering in sport brake in sport chassis sport plus engine in sport plus meaning that we have 503 horsepower and this is an all-wheel drive so we do have all the traction that we need I love this color of this thing so let's put it in manual here and let's see let's go down to second gear and let's just floor it <laughs> oh, so much fun to drive this thing it definitely builds up to the power range in the low two to three thousand not not a lot happening it does have a twin turbo so that has probably something to do with it but it makes it i think more engaging to fun uh, to drive when you uh, need to keep make sure that you have it in a specific rev range oh it sounds like thunder in the back nuts this is connected to an eight speed automatic transmission the one we have in a lot of different uh, m cars and you also have a zero to 60 time in about three seconds with a top speed of 172 miles per hour here's the thing with this iDrive 8 system right now when i'm driving it i don't even think about the layout of it because i'm so engaged in driving that the iDrive 8 doesn't bother me as much as when i'm just analyzing the interior designs and stuff like that so in that sense i guess it you know, I still prefer the iDrive 7 just because we have the, you know, the housing for the gauge cluster and it just feels like the interior designers put more effort into designing that thing. But, jeez, this thing goes. So much fun to drive and so violent and it shifts. I love it. And that's, of course, because we have everything in Sport Plus. That's exactly what we want to have if we ask that from an M3. brakes are fantastic as well as expected from an M3 competition and I would honestly buy the M3 over the M4 because I think for once a sedan looks better than a coupe and it's weird to say specifically when you're talking about a BMW all right coming into a traffic circle here let's put it in second gear Oh, it pulls so nicely. Oof. What 
a car this is. What a machine. I still think that uh, the RS models that I've driven compared to the M models, M still feels more aggressive and more violent in their more, most sporty settings. It feels more race car than the RS models. RS, Audi is uh, angled a little bit more towards the luxury feel and I think it's a good option to have both of these but personally I prefer the BMW M's when it comes to uh, sportiness of these two uh, cars all right so let's slow it down a little bit and do one last pull from second gear let's go oh Jesus it is quick, seriously quick. And the thing is, it accelerates so fast, but thank, all thanks to the uh, all-wheel drive system that we didn't have in the M2 competition I just drove. This feels a lot more stable under um, hard acceleration. Stable might also mean a little less fun compared to the M2. I really enjoyed the M2 uh, driving. I really enjoy driving this too, but if I were to pick one, Honestly, I'm gonna go with the 2020 M2. Fantastic car in a fantastic color. Thanks again to Winslow BMW for letting me review this gorgeous BMW M3. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you are interested in this M2, M3 itself, I'm gonna link it down in the description along with the full inventory. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.